It's that time again. We need to thank our... I sound like the man from the fair there. It's that time. Scream if you want to go faster. Um, new Patreon people. Uh, Peter Clark, Joe Page, thank you very much for supporting the channel over on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Lelujo. If you'd also like to get involved in there, big thanks to you both. I'm just... I'm, I'm sorry for what's just happened. Not the thanks bit, the whole guy from the fair bit. Should I re-record this? Hello and welcome to part 101 of Back in the Borough. That's becoming a bit of a mouthful. Can we just start renumbering? Um, I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode we have two big games. One is a relegation battle away against Exeter in the Championship and the other is a big FA Cup fourth round game away against Stoke. We made a lot of money in our away game against Tottenham in the FA Cup last year. I guess we're not going to make quite as much money against Stoke but we really could use the money because our balance is dwindling ever down and at the moment the projection is not looking too clever for the end of the season so we could do with another like we got a million pounds out of the Tottenham game last year five six hundred thousand pounds out of this Stoke game that could be very very handy since you were last with me and um, this is what form has looked like so we've had a weird time of it we had a horrible horrible run in the league where we we tried various different things tactically we persisted with the 352 i think for those two games against hull we tried a diamond and that really didn't work then we tried um i think they were in fact we can probably have a look to see what we did against swansea what did we do against swansea we were back to the 4312 against swansea and burton and didn't score a single goal against swindon we started with uh 352 when I think when we got to 3-0 down, we switched to the 4-3-1-2 and ended up winning the game. So we then used the 4-3-1-2 again against Derby and won the game. Andrew Skelton was in that game, scored off the bench, and he's recently had a £4 million offer accepted um, from Brentford who are in the Premier League. So Andrew Skelton's going to be a Premier League player. I think any hopes that we had of signing him are now long gone. But then we persisted with the 4 3 1 2 again because I thought, oh wow, it's finally working again. But no, we got thumped by Leeds and then we also got thumped by Crystal Palace. So now we're away against Exeter. Exeter is a massive, massive game. So if we have a look at the league table as it stands right now, 28 games in now, we are miles away from the Kev ratio. But luckily, still level on points with the team above us in the relegation battle because there's four teams in this division who are useless. One is us. One is Exeter, the team we play right now. We must beat them a defeat against Exeter and we are in all kinds of trouble. A win and we drag ourselves back out of the relegation zone again and we're closing back in on that Kev ratio and trying to drag Wigan and Sheffield United back into the fight. But we must win now to be able to do that, otherwise we are all but down. Luckily, even if we go down, it doesn't look like I'm going to get sacked. I'm still very secure in my job. The board is still very pleased with my overall leadership of the club. Relegation isn't a disaster. It's just not ideal. We'd, we'd rather stay in this division and continue slowly assembling a team capable of pushing on to that next level once we have the facilities to keep up with it. And the ground is due. Hold on, that's the youth facilities. Where is the ground? There you go. The new stadium is due on the 9th of January 2032, so less than two years away now. We should have the new stadium, at which point we'll have the the infrastructure to try and push on to the next level because we won't be operating on such a shoestring budget. So all of that leads up to another new tactic that we're going to use against Exeter. We're going to try 4 one three, two. It's something I've used in previous versions of Football Manager and it's gone really well. I have not tried this with any team at any point of FM18. This could be brilliant. It could be a disaster. And I've kind of guessed and made it up as I've gone along. So, I don't know. I, I'm running out of ideas. We've got to try something different. We're going counter-attacking because we're away from home. We're going to give this... I mean, ideally, it's still nil-nil on 60 minutes, at which point we take off one of this slot and bring James Ball on, go to their normal 4-3-1-2 and just go at them for the last 20 minutes. That's the plan. But uh, we'll see how it works out. So we've got Mitchell in goal, a back four of Anderson, Flores, Sawyer and Ibrahim with Barber in behind the midfield three. Alex Barber is actually a natural defensive midfielder. Not, not only that, he's a three and a half star natural defensive midfielder who we don't give much game time to because he's such a... Def I mean, we've got a really good defensive midfielder at the club. We probably need to start using him. So he's going to be playing in behind a midfield three of Davies, Johnson and Darwin. And we've gone for two Carrilleros and an attacking playmaker on a, an advanced playmaker on attack. I don't know if that's a sensible thing to do. Two Carrilleros seem to make sense just to 
keep these areas filled up although we've got big gaps up here especially because we're we're telling our defend our fullbacks not to push on the way they normally do. We've got a defensive fullback and a wing back on defend. So we still want Joe Anderson to get crosses in because he's so effective with his crossing, but we don't want him to be crossing from here. We want him to be crossing from like here. And just big floating crosses up to Dan Fisher and Matt Symes who are going to be our forwards for today. I'm really nervous. I don't. I mean, this could go one of two ways. I could be a genius and we could finally have our away from home tactic. Or we could be about to get thumped by a team that we had to win and perhaps could have beaten with the 4 3 1 2. But now we'll never know. They've got Loftus Cheek in their team. We've got Miles Darwin. Who would you rather have? Exactly. Right. I don't I don't really know how to judge if this is going well either because I don't I don't have much experience of going into a team with a deliberately negative tactic. I guess we judge it based on how many clear-cut chances or how many shots they're getting. We we shouldn't expect to have much in the way of possession, which is good because we've only had 30% of the possession. Holy smokes. Um, so we shouldn't be expecting much in the way of possession. We shouldn't really be expecting to create much in the way of chances for ourselves. The mark of success is how many chances are they getting. And if we're limiting their chances, then we're doing our job at the moment. And then we can look to pounce on them in the second half when they start to tire. Right, Symes beats his man. And can't find Fisher, who... I mean, Fisher wasn't even hovering around in the middle anywhere. In fact, I was supposed to take team instructions off, did I? I did. Because what I didn't want is high-tempo pressing... A normal high-tempo pressing game tiring us out. I want them to tire out trying to attack us. And then once they're tired, then we're going to turn on the high-tempo attacking football. Because I think we're fit than them. If you look at our conditioning, we're still in the 80s and 90s. They're down in the 70s. If we get into that 60th, 70th minute... See, I'm actually, I've actually thought about this. There's actual thought gone into trying to specifically beat a team in a specific football match. It just... It's a big gamble. Right. Nil-nil at half-time. All going to plan so far. We've not had any anything in the way of chances, or two half chances apparently we've created. I mean, the even more ideal situation is that we grab a goal before we get to that 65-ish minute mark, because then we don't even have to change things up. We'll just grab a goal and just sit and defend. But I think if we're going to have any chance of picking up three points in this game, which we need really, if it was against a team higher up the table, we'd just carry on as we are and continue trying to frustrate them. But... For now, I, f I think we've got to go and try and win it. They're starting to tire. We're, I mean, we're starting to tire as well. Uh, but now is the time to just flick that switch and go for it. So, who's going to come off? In the midfield three, we are going to take off... We're going to take off Davis because he's on a yellow card. And he's also quite tired. So, we're going to bring James Ball on for him. And then we're also going to take off Dan Fisher, who's not really turned up today. And we get Ruggles on for him. And we're going to go control, flexible. And then we are going to stick on the high tempo, the closing down, exploit the middle. We're still not going to look for overlap. I'm still going to keep my fullbacks back. I am trying to learn that lesson. We're going to keep them back here and just try and win the game in these areas. I mean, you could argue maybe a diamond is the way forward here. A diamond on standard might be the less exaggerated version of this I see I'm second guessing myself now because I've been so impressed with how we've defended clear all of that we're going to we're going to do this actually and we're going to keep Barber in there as a defensive midfielder we'll keep these two as Carrilleros because I think two Carrilleros works in a diamond but we're going to do that ball could get isolated if we do that just drop him back a little bit and do that maybe so we're not going full on attack but we are trying to be a little bit more expansive by moving out to standard. Please don't bite me in the backside. This is where you will tell me, Kev, your original plan was a much better plan. Why did you second guess yourself mid-match? Because I'm afraid of giving up this point that we really, really need. Right, Ibrahim is coming off. He's not playing very well. Lang is a more than adequate replacement at right back. Do we go 
do we go control for the last 10 minutes? They're tired. Look how tired they are. We are. We're going to try and control the last five minutes of the game and hope that there might be a goal in it for us. We've had the better chances. We've had three half chances to their one. Neither team has created a clear-cut chance, um, which I guess is why we're both down in the relegation battle because neither of us are very good. Um, but this is this is where, because we're pushing forward, Exeter are going to punish us. And here they come. They're in behind our back four and they've just got a big chance. That's the best chance of the game so far. The first clear-cut chance. They have missed it. Do we now drop back again because we're afraid of them doing that again or do we keep conti- do we keep pushing on? I mean, I've talked so long I don't get any time to change anything now. And here's Symes. Symes is in behind. Can he be the first man there? He can. Symes. Oh, that close. With the last kick of the game. That close to making me a genius. As it is, we've got to celebrate the fact that we've just kept a clean sheet away from home. Because I don't know that we've done that at any other point this season. We've stayed, we, we've kept Exeter with us. We've kept them in the fight. We've still got an awful lot of work to do. But now we forget about the league for the rest of the episode because we've got Stoke. This is all about, well, I mean, we'll carry, we'll carry on practicing our new defensive system. But really, we just want the money. We don't care what the score is. A couple of personnel changes for the Stoke game, then we're not changing the system. The system, if we could do another clean sheet, would be amazing. But ball comes into the midfield from the start. I quite like the flexibility of being able to go to a diamond, go to a 4-3-1-2 without having to change the personnel. So that might be our arrangement of our midfield. It does involve dropping the million pound man. But let's face it, he's been a massive disappointment anyway. And I'm kind of hoping someone's going to be stupid enough to buy him office in the summer. I mean, Birmingham paid 800000 last summer. If someone gives us a million back for him this summer, then we'll just pretend it never happened. We'll all agree that Miles Darwin was never a thing. Sawyer comes in at right back as well. So if we're playing with a defensive fullback, Joshua Sawyer is actually our best right back. Up there level with Jake Lang, but Jake Lang's never been that comfortable playing as an out and out defender. He's more of a wing back. Whereas Sawyer is just a defensive centre back. So we kind of have a nice solid defensive line. Anderson still getting forward enough to get the crosses into these two. Um, and these two are slightly different as well. We've gone Ruggles and Symes up front. Um, Dan Fisher's had a decent run of games and his form, I mean, you could argue he perhaps deserves a start. But I think we're more of a goal threat with Ruggles and Symes. So we're going with Ruggles and Symes for today. We might well have Dan Fisher in for the next game. But we're going to go there counter attacking. And no instructions as before, and we'll see how we get on. I imagine this is going to be, this is going to be just as disgusting as the Tottenham game was last year. Stoke are a mid-table Premier League team in this universe, and uh, I mean, if we, as long as we don't concede seven goals, then that's got to be seen as progress year on year. We were knocked out in the third round, conceding, conceding seven goals last year. This time we made it through the third round, only conceding four goals. And we now find ourselves in the fourth round with hopefully another big Premier League payoff. What we're, what we're keen to see when we get the highlights, more than us actually having possession or attacking or anything like that, we want to make sure that the place is packed out. How many fans does Stoke's ground have? There's gaps. There's a lot of gaps there. Oh, I wanted a big payout, but Stoke fans haven't been bothered to turn up. The monsters. We're already 1-0 down, by the way, conceding from a set piece. As the lower league team... It's never fun to concede from a set piece in a game like this. Somehow we're being seriously overrun in midfield, despite having more midfielders than they have. We've got four central midfielders playing. They have two and then four attackers. But apparently that means we're being overrun in midfield. Um, But other than that set piece, things are staying fairly tight at the moment, which is, I mean, it's no bad thing. I'm not going to start trying to attack them just yet. Obviously, if it's still 1-0 with 20 minutes to go, then we might have a little go. But for now, we just want to keep the score down for as long as possible. And obviously, if they go 2 or 3 up, we'll probably just defend all the way through. Because we were never quite the same after Tottenham last year. Um, the, we said at the time, morale was bad because of it. And yeah, but oh, see. We've now had a set piece in a piece of individual brilliance. I don't think you can blame our system for either of the goals that Stoke have scored there. It's not like they've just torn us open. They've had a well-worked set piece. And then this, I mean, wind and eaten. What are we supposed to do about a player who can do that? We've got nothing to protect ourselves against that. So I'm still counting this a victory for the system at the moment. In my head, it's still nil-nil. We're going to judge this based on clear-cut chances. As long as they don't end up with four, five, six clear-cut chances, then 
then the system has done okay. They've had the one clear-cut chance, which I don't think either of the goals would count as a clear-cut chance. So I guess they've missed the actual clear-cut chance that they had. Um, but we've not had a shot on target yet. So that's that's problematic. But at the same time, we were never going to be in this game anyway. So if it's two, if it ends 2-0, that's that should be something we can take some positives out of as a team. If it ends 4-5-6-7... <laughs> <laughs> then we're in the same boat we were in last year, except morale was already lower to begin with because we've had a rotten season. Now, that was poor defending, but we've got away with that. That's their second clear-cut chance. So I think they've had two clear-cut chances and missed them both. And then, unless the set piece that they scored from before maybe counted as clear-cut, but I don't see how it was. Huge with the clearance. And we're going at half-time relatively relatively positive i think about how that's gone we've not made fools of ourselves this year which is a real bonus yeah see people are delighted i like it when people are delighted uh, we do have to make a decision at some point whether we're just going to accept the defeat and try and keep the score down or whether we are going to just see what happens if we put them under a little bit of pressure because i don't know they don't they're obviously not as good as tottenham were last year but if we do try and put them under a little bit of pressure, are we going to leave ourselves in an absolute mess at the back? Look at all those men we've got behind the ball. It doesn't look like a Kev team at all. This is Kev in desperation survival mode, trying not to get relegated from the pre from the championship, trying not to get absolutely battered by a Premier League team. Just men, I feel dirty having all those men behind the ball. But it, it is effective. We're, we're still keeping the number of chances down. They've only had four shots on target in the entire game. We've not had any. But we're keeping the chances down at the other end, and that's important. Right, Ruggles. What can he do? Finds ball. Ball plays Symes through. Symes should get a shot here, and he does. And that's our first clear-cut chance of the game. So, clear-cut chance-wise, it's 2-1. We're playing very, very well against mid-table Premier League opposition at the moment. Yes, we're losing, but this is only the second time we've ever used this tactic. And it does seem effective. The problem we've got, of course, is that it doesn't create any chances for us. Really. Although Ruggles is in behind now. Surely Ruggles scores. We've had two massive opportunities. That one, unbelievably, only gone down as a half chance. But it could be two all. If our two forwards had been on form, it would be two all at this point. And I would be proclaiming myself a genius. Once again, what did Joe Anderson just do? Oh, dear. That one, I think, is the first one that we chalk up to poor defending. Although I don't really know what he does. Does Joe Anderson slip here? Let's just keep an eye on what he's doing. He just... I think he's trying to head that. Hmm. That wasn't... That wasn't the best plan, Joe. 400 plus appearances for an Eaton. And you still think a diving header is a good way to tackle somebody. Well... Well, at least we're not going to bother trying to attack now. Because there's no coming back from 3-0 down. It's just... Get some other players on. In fact, let's get both the strikers on. Um, Fisher and Cairns can both come on. I suppose we should give Miles Darwin a run out as well, just to justify spending a million pounds on him. Put him in the shop window. He might have a blinding 20 minutes and Stoke might give us four million quid for him. Now we know that's the price to buy a championship midfielder because that's how much Andrew Skelton's going for. Or has got. he's probably gone by now. Four million quid, though. No wonder we couldn't get him in the summer. Here is Darwin with a free, Dar, Darwin with a free kick and hits the crossbar. So, you know, that's worth a couple of million, I think, if Stoke are willing to put their hands in their pockets. Anderson with a big clearance this time. No diving headers this time around. He knows that when the ball is on the floor, it's probably a good idea to kick it rather than head it. It's a shame it's taken him to the age of 28 to figure that out as a professional footballer, but he got there in the end. And... I mean, 3-0. At least it wasn't embarrassing this time. I think there's some potential in this system. It's just whether... I don't know. Have we got enough time left to try and defend our way to safety? Or is this really how we should have started the season? And now we kind of just need to throw caution to the wind and get some points on the board. I guess we'll find out what I decide to do on Monday. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>